Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a crime, comedy film from 2013, titled We're the Millers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. David is sitting at home watching YouTube videos, when he gets a text asking if he got the goods, yes, of course he got the goods. He packs his bag and heads out. First stop a mommy, then broker and chef. His client list is not declining. David runs into Ricky, they went to college together, they catch up and David gives him some kush. Ricky is surprised he's still dealing, but says he envies his free lifestyle, no wife, no kids, nothing, he could disappear tomorrow and no one would notice. That does not sound so good when you say it out loud. Rose is a dancer at a club. She dislikes her job, also she's David's neighbor and they do not get along at all. Kenny comes out and hints at buying some of the good stuff, but David doesn't sell it to kids even though Kenny's 18. Kenny notices Casey, a homeless girl, being harassed by some thugs, he comes to her rescue only to get beat up, David intervenes. Kenny blurts out that he's cool, he's a dealer. Bad move, they threaten David with a knife to make him give them his backpack. He manages to get past the thugs and escape as they chase after him. Eventually David is cornered and takes a cliché leap into the dumpster, only to accidentally close it with his backpack and land on the lid. They ransack his flat and steal everything. David receives calls from his supplier, but hangs up. A black jeep pulls up and two men tase him and throw him in. They take him to Brad's estate. The uncomfortable part is that he's standing on plastic wrap so as not to smear anything in case the negotiations go south. Brad laughs at him and says the plastic is for the new skylight. That's a huge aquarium, with a whale. David owes Brad 43 grand. Things are bad, but Brad proposes a win-win scenario. He needs a smidge of kush delivered from Mexico, his usual courier got gunned down so he needs David to be his mule, someone he can trust. If he pulls this off, his debt will be wiped off and as a bonus he will receive $100,000. David is hesitant because if he gets caught, he faces life sentence in a Mexican prison. Although he is forgetting one thing, he doesn't have a choice. Kenny suggests dressing up since he totally looks like a dealer. David berates him for his stupid ideas. When a Flanders family comes by to ask for directions, the officer is very nice to them and gives them information, that's when it becomes clear to David, he needs a family and an RV. David visits Rose to recruit her as his wife, he will pay her $10,000. Rose refuses, she does not trust him. David recruits Kenny with no problem and he suggests another member, Casey. She agrees to do it for $1,000. Kenny meets his new sister. Rose's manager informs her that there is a slight change in club's policy, he wants her to sleep with the customers. Rose quits on the spot even though she's strapped for cash. David is at the barbershop, giving Kenny and Casey money so they can buy new clothes. On second thought, Kenny already looks like a nerd, so he snags his money and gives it to Casey. David sits down and the hairdresser asks him what he wants. Something that looks like he gets up at 5.30 in the morning, commuting an hour and a half for some BS job where his boss expects him to kiss his balls all day so he can afford to keep his ungrateful screaming kids and annoying wife until the day he's encouraged to put a shotgun in his mouth. Right here. They are at the airport, David gives his papers to the security, and the guard says he's good. Casey is an angel in the photo and in real life. Kenny though, sussy, full body check. On the plane, Rose arrives unexpectedly. She asks for 30 grand instead of 10 and she will be in, David agrees. They arrive as their RV rolls up and off they go. Casey notices a stand with fireworks and begs David to stop, but he refuses. Then Kenny and Rose join in the chant. He yells at everyone and says they are not a real family. They reach the Mexico border and the guard just lets them through. David is shocked that it actually worked. They arrive at a huge gate with several armed guards. They are let in, everyone who isn't shy has a gun in their hands. The whole situation doesn't phase David, on the other hand, others are concerned. When he meets the supposed boss, one eye threatens him with a gun until he mentions that Pablo Chacon sent him, Brad's presumed alias. David tells him he's with his family and one eye invites him in. It's more than a smudge of kush, it's two tons. David calls Brad and he's actually surprised they are giving him the goods, like he's not sure saying it's for Pablo Chacon would have worked. A woman offers Kenny some fruit. He politely declines, but decides against it when one eye says he'll blow his brains out if he doesn't take it. The RV is packed, Snoop Dogg would love this fridge. There's a spider crawling around the fruits. They leave the camp and on the way out an officer is waiting for them, he knows they have some pot on them so he's just there to collect his bribe of a 1000 and he will be on his way, unfortunately they don't have that much so he'll accept something more personal. David gets the hint, Rose suck him off. Rose is not going to do it, the officer tells her not to worry, he's more into men. 
David calls Kenny outside who is unaware of his intentions, he explains the plan and that he needs to satisfy the officer, Kenny refuses, he doesn't swing that way. David asks him to do it for the girls, for Casey and he agrees. The cop comes in and asks what's the holdup, will someone do it or will I get 1000 pesos? Turns out he didn't mean dollars, David hands him a 100 and they go on their way. At the border, the Fitzgerald family pulls up beside them in an RV. They make a huge scene. Millers want to stay low, but Fitzgeralds force their hand, and they reluctantly welcome them. Their daughter Melissa takes a liking to Kenny. When it's their turn to be checked, a guy gets busted for having a joint, having second thoughts David slams on the brakes, and pot falls out of a cupboard, Rose wraps it in a blanket to make it look like a baby. Fitzgeralds are dying to know more about the baby. The security guard tells them to pull up. They put on their hats. The guard greets David and asks him if they are bringing anything from Mexico that he should know. David is scared and speechless, the dog starts barking and they get pulled over for an inspection. Just as the inspector is about to search the RV, five illegal immigrants who were hiding under the RV run off. The inspector apologizes for the inconvenience and sends them on their way. They are bewildered by what has just happened and by the life sentence hanging over them. They are glad that everything went well, turn up the music and have a blast. Meanwhile, the real Pablo Chacon arrives and finds out his pot has been taken, so they go after it. Back to the Millers, they are driving a 15-ton vehicle up a slope, their engine breaks down. Also, there's no signal. Casey and Rose head out to get help. Moments later Fitzgeralds pull up and gives them a ride, they know a mechanic who can help them. In the RV, the woman, Edie, inquires with David about how Rose and he met. David tells the true story of how they met in her flat and it is truly amazing how detailed he remembers it and surprises Rose with it. Don asks David to get the map out of the glove box, that's when he notices a badge and a gun, Don is an off-duty DEA agent. This makes them nervous and they go to have a family meeting. Their plan is to shake off Fritz Gerald's family as soon as possible, but unfortunately the repair garage is closed so they have to camp out for the night. When Edie tries to take the baby from Rose so she can have some free time, she fights back and ends up throwing the pot blanket into the road, getting it run over twice. Edie is hysterical, but Casey saves the day by telling her that the baby was her school project, it was not a real baby, they apologize to the Gerald family. In the evening they make a bonfire and sing some songs, A for effort to Miller's. They also play a drawing game where the answer to Melissa's drawing is plain and simple, no one could get it right. Kenny is up next, he had to draw a skateboard, that's a little misleading. After the games Kenny has a nice chat with Melissa, they like each other. Melissa leans for a kiss, but he just hugs her. David goes to comfort him and ends up giving him some solid advice. Casey feels sorry for Kenny and she decides to teach him how to kiss, wouldn't say Casey enjoys it. They continue practicing when David and Rose return. Rose joins in and asks him to show her what he's learned. Not bad, she teaches him another technique, David is just a spectator at this point. Suddenly Melissa shows up and is shocked by what's going on. Don drives Millers to the garage where their RV should be fixed. The Fritzgeralds head off, David goes in to get his RV, Brad calls and asks him where he is, he should have been back by now. He explains the situation and says he'll be back soon when he sees the mechanic tied to a chair, Pablo has located them. David hands him the phone, Brad gets scared and hangs up, one eye is here too. They found them through a transmitter planted in the pot. The Millers argue amongst themselves, revealing that they are not a real family, and when Pablo learns that Rose is a dancer, he asks her to perform. Rose starts taking off her clothes, climbs the stairs, gets on her trusty pole and soaks herself. David rates it at 5 out of 5. A great performance by Rose, Kenny barely manages to keep his hands to himself. Rose distracts Pablo with her chest massage and opens the hot steam valve, while David takes a wrench and smacks one eye. When he does not succeed, he tries to resolve things peacefully, but it doesn't work. Kenny manages to run one eye over, they all get into the RV, Kenny is still behind the wheel, destroying Pablo's car while being shot at. David tries to take the wheel and the fruits fall down with the spider. The spider climbs on Kenny's leg, the RV goes off the main road, but everyone is fine. Except Kenny, the spider bit him, he runs outside and the others follow, it looks like it really hurts. Rose asks him to show her his balls. He drops his pants, as this is a family-friendly video I will leave the gruesome sight to your imagination. David is still arguing with Rose that he doesn't have time to drive him to the hospital until Kenny passes out. Once at the hospital, David calls Brad. Brad is surprised to find David still alive. David threatens to double-cross Brad and give Pablo the smidgen of the pot. Brad offers him half a million dollars in compensation for his troubles, but only if he delivers the goods by tonight. 
the doctor tells them that Kenny could be released in a few hours, but that does not sit well with David, he needs Kenny and his giant nut out of here now. Even after he explains the situation to Rose and Casey, they decide to stay. A boy comes over to the RV, Scotty P., a well-mannered young man, if you know what I'm saying. He's here to pick up Casey. Before they leave, Rose decides to chat with him a bit, they inquire about his tattoos, especially the one on his collarbone, no regrets. Casey is very uncomfortable with the whole situation, so she and Scotty leave. Afterwards, Rose and David bond, she reveals that Rose is her stage name, her real name is Sarah and they almost share a moment when Casey comes back from her ride. They scold her for being gone so long like real parents would. Casey gets a warm feeling that someone is worried about her. They finally manage to retrieve Kenny. He rushes him to the RV but drops him, explaining that he's in a hurry because the deadline for the job is in 4 hours and blurts out that 500 grand are on the line. Rose, I can explain. You're making $500,000 and I'm only giving me 30? 30 grand? I'm only getting a thousand. You guys are getting paid? Casey walks away angry. Rose and Kenny refuse to leave without her. David angrily tells them they deserve each other and drives off. Pablo finds out their whereabouts and Casey meets up with Scotty. David calls Brad to tell him he'll be back in three hours. A little while later, he obviously misses them. Casey tells Scotty about her problems related to the whole trip, but he just wants to get it going. Rose intervenes, telling him to keep his hands to himself. The situation escalates and Rose punches the kid. David has come back to them but they are not so pleased to see him. They wait for an apology, but he keeps talking nonsense because his pride gets in the way. He even proposes splitting 500 grand, each getting 125, nope, they want David to beg for their forgiveness, and so he does. On the way to the RV, they run into Fritz Gerald's. They have a little scuffle over what Melissa saw them do last night. To redeem himself, Kenny tells her that they just smuggled some pot and are not a real family. While they are trying to cover it up with lies, one eye walks up to them. He points his gun at David, but then Don opens the door of the RV and beats him up with a huge mug. Melissa is about to call the cops when Pablo takes her hostage. David hands him the keys to the RV. They say he doesn't have to kill them since he has his pot back. He lists that they forced him to cross the border, burned his face, destroyed his car, and beat up his companion, twice. He doesn't have to shoot them, but he wants to. David begs him not to shoot anyone but him, Pablo disagrees, at that moment fireworks distract him and David manages to throw the gun out of his hand, somehow Rose grazes Pablo and Kenny comes up with a knockout punch. He makes out with Melissa using the technique Rose taught him. David and Rose also make out. Don arrests Pablo and makes out with Edie. He lets the Millers go. The next day David is at Brad's place to deliver the goods, but the deadline was last night, so no deal. He realizes that Brad would never pay him, no matter the outcome. Suddenly the DEA storms the place, he has informed them with Don's help. He doesn't get the money, but in exchange he and his fake family are put under witness protection for three to six months. Sometime later, David waters his plants in the suburbs and introduces his family to the neighbors. We are the Millers. Happy ending, but some things never change. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.